The first leg of festival season is over, with the conclusion of the Toronto International Film Festival a week ago and Venice and Telluride earlier this month. The dust is starting to settle, but it's tough to know exactly where this year is headed since these three events screened so many strong movies. Six films in particular received major praise. Universal's First Man, Netflix's Roma, Warner Brothers' A Star is Born, Annapurna's If Beale Street Could Talk, Universal's Green Book, and Fox's Widows. Right now, you're looking at these and Spike Lee's already released Black Klansman and Marvel's Ryan Coogler helmed Black Panther as the most competitive awards films thus far. Now that the Academy has postponed the popular Oscar or whatever you want to call it because they have no idea how people are going to vote on those nominees, Black Panther is squarely in the major races again. Other well-received festival debuts that will figure prominently throughout the season are The Favorite, Suspiria, At Eternity's Gate, Ben is Back, and Can You Ever Forgive Me? The future is a bit more unclear for Destroyer, starring a seriously deglamped Nicole Kidman, The Old Man and the Gun, starring Robert Redford, Sissy Spacek, and Casey Affleck, the Natalie Portman pop star movie Vox Lux, and Amazon's Beautiful Boy with Steve Carell and Timothée Chalamet. The great word of mouth surrounding A Star is Born couldn't be better news for Warner Brothers, who are looking at both an awards contender and a box office smash. Expect both Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga to be very competitive in the leading categories, as they're both getting rave reviews out of Venice and Toronto, and will definitely campaign the hell out of this movie. Netflix is going to get its first Best Picture Oscar nominee for Alfonso Cuaron's family drama masterpiece, Roma, a one-of-a-kind love letter to motherhood and the sacrifices women make for children and humanity, set during Mexico City's Corpus Christi Massacre. It's a profound cinematic experience, so if you can see it in a movie theater, I definitely suggest that. The American flag controversy surrounding First Man won't affect its awards prospects at all. If you haven't heard, some people are up in arms that you don't see them plant the flag on the moon in the movie and that makes it un-American or something, but anyway, it'll be another great season for Damien Chazelle, Ryan Gosling, and Claire Foy. Chazelle will be the first director to have his first three features nominated for Best Picture. Yeah. Some guy called over here, a doctor. He's looking for a driver. You interested? Universal's other pony in the race, Green Book, surprised everyone by winning the Audience Choice Award at Toronto, a title everyone thought was sure to go to A Star is Born. Viggo Mortensen has been overdue for years, and Mahershala Ali is a recent winner for Moonlight, so expect these two to be heavy contenders in their respective acting races. More than that, Green Book seems more and more to be a viable top five contender. Is that you reap what you sow? Let's hope so. Toronto also launched Steve McQueen's Widows, starring the always brilliant Viola Davis. It's already being labeled as one of the best heist films ever, so expect this to be a hit amongst audience and critics alike. Annapurna's If Beale Street Could Talk also found very warm reception in Canada. Barry Jenkins' sophomore feature did not disappoint on any level and could very well position Regina King for a Supporting Actress Oscar win, especially after her recent one at the Emmys. Defending Oscar champ Fox Searchlight took all three of its contenders to Telluride, where they had big success in the past. Dearest Queen, how goes the kingdom? The Favorite is one of the more unique films of the season, thanks to the fun direction by Yorgos Lanthiomos and the three knockout leading performances by Olivia Colman, Emma Stone, and Rachel Weiss. Being that it's one of the only films in the conversation that stars mostly women along with Widows, Suspiria, and Roma, I would be shocked if it doesn't make the shortlist in the end. Melissa McCarthy could very well win an Oscar for Can You Ever Forgive Me, which was one of my favorite selections at Telluride. Just these. I don't want the others. Come on, man. I slept these all the way here. There's people waiting. You know, you don't have to be so disrespectful. You've actually carried my books here. And you are? Lee Israel. Oh, we have copies of your latest work right over there. There aren't many female directors in the race, and Marielle Heller's direction should be noticed. Ditto Nicole Holofsner and Jeff Witte's impeccable script in the moving and hilarious supporting performance by Richard E. Grant. It's about two gay friends navigating their way through a rough patch in their lives. And if Call Me By Your Name couldn't pick up certain nominations, I'm afraid that this might happen to that one too. Some of the films with more mixed reactions are looking strong in several of the acting categories. 
Julia Roberts has returned to the Oscar game with Ben is back. Willem Dafoe is competitive again this year as Vincent van Gogh in At Eternity's Gate. It's tough to know what exactly is going to pick up steam until the precursor nominations at the end of November, but until then we'll just have to go off of box office and reviews, which are huge indicators as well. The Oscars are desperate to be relevant, so I think they'll nominate more of the crowd favorites this year. 